leadership at all levels, from the shop floor to the CEO. The idea that uh, good ideas come from uh, all different levels of the organization. This is anti-Taylor. That is, everybody is encouraged to think. Okay, Drive out fear, a big theme of Deming, so that everybody may work effectively. Deming would often say, if your workers tell you they're not making any mistakes, they're lying and you're a fool. <laughs> they're lying and you're a fool. Everybody makes mistakes. That's not the issue. The issue is, are you learning from them? Break down barriers between departments. Eliminate slogans. Silly slogans like zero defects. Stupid slogans like zero defects. Eliminate work quotas and management by objectives. Remove barriers that rob workers of pride of workmanship, rob managers and engineers of pride of workmanship. Institute a vigorous program of education and self-improvement. Now you remember he already mentioned training. Six. Now education and self what's, what's the difference between education and training? Okay. Put everyone to work to continuously improve. Those are the 14 points. He also gave us seven deadly sins. If you want to examine whether or not your company is uh, in trouble, look and see if you're doing these seven things. If, if you lack constancy of purpose, if you have an emphasis in short-term profits, if you use performance rank uh, evaluations that tend to rank and sort, like we do in the university, you know, I'm going to take this row and we give them A's and take that row and give them B's, ranking and sorting. It's a bad way to motivate, bad way to encourage. Okay. Mobility of management. Deming said that one of the sins of corporate America is uh, managers tend not to stay in the same company for their entire career. Five, management by use of visible data only. That is, failure to look between below the headlines, to, to really dig down and understand what the numbers mean. Excessive medical costs. The University of Missouri, for instance, um, I currently serve on the system-wide uh, retirement and benefits committee. We'll be meeting in Columbia tomorrow to consider a package of changes to the benefits package for our faculty and staff. Uh, the primary concern is the impact of the government change in government regulation, Obamacare, on the university and some of these changes are mandated some of them go into effect in 2011 some 2013 2014 so you don't have a choice so you have to you know you have to make changes to your plans but then it turns out that um, something is some changes that we can make uh, significantly increase the service provided to the employee the um, for instance, orthodontia. We've never covered, you know, braces for kids of employees, but it looks like we're going to do that because the cost, the additional cost, is pretty minimal to our dental plan. And uh, medical cost, um, I, I in my own life, I never paid much attention to medical costs until recently because I was never sick you know, and didn't have to have medications, didn't have to see the doctor. And in fact, I remember when I went to Purdue when I was 30, um, they have a process there where as a faculty member, you're required to have an annual checkup as a part of their medical plan. You, uh, Missouri S&T has re recently instituted, it's just beginning this month as a matter of fact, 
a wellness program whereby if you if you go to the doctor and find out what your cholesterol level is, your heart, your uh, blood pressure level, and that sort of thing, they're going to pay you. The university is going to pay faculty and staff to do this. I, I don't think it's a lot. It's 150 bucks, but. Jan can take one of her friends to dinner. How does that benefit the university? Doing What's that? that? How does it benefit the university doing that? I mean, does that mean they can change the, your coverage? Every dollar, that we predict every dollar will be a $3 decrease in cost. If we can get employees to pay attention to their own health and focus on wellness, they will be sick less. And therefore, the, the actual payout the uh, all, every all of the data says that it's at least three to one payback. For every buck they spend, they're going to get three dollars back and reduce health care costs. Good question. So, uh, excessive warranty and liability costs. <clears throat> You've been seeing a lot of changes in, for instance, in the automobile industry and warranties, extended warranties, Hyundai. Uh, penetrated North America primarily because they offered a 10-year, 100,000-mile unconditional bumper-to-bumper -bumper warranty on their new vehicles. Uh, you may remember a, a vehicle, some of you may not, called the Yugo. Uh, the warranty was pretty limited. No, you don't remember. Okay. The warranty was pretty limited because the vehicle was just generally a piece of trash. Now, the Hyundai, when it first started out, Korean vehicle, Korean company, started out, it was not the highest reliability, but the company said the only way we're going to get customers to buy our product, since they don't know us, is to guarantee it. And that's what a warranty does. I think what you will see pretty quickly now, companies are beginning to point in this direction. I've been telling... <laughs> General Motors, Ford, and Chrysler for 30 years that what you got to do, unconditional, bumper to bumper, no strings attached warranty for, for the, as long as you own the vehicle. Buy the car, anything goes wrong, by golly, we're going to fix it. And that's what's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's slow. takes a while for them to listen, but, th but that's what's going to happen. Resistant to change. Right, resistance to change. But now, how can the company <coughs> afford that kind of a warranty? Well, make a reliable product. <laughs> Rocket science. Make a reliable product. Make a real. Make a product that's not gonna. That's not gonna fail. And uh, but but what Deming was saying when he wrote this back in the '40s was that you've got to really be careful about the lack of emphasis on reliability. Okay, so those are the seven deadly sins. So if you have a company and you have, you have any of these issues, you're in trouble. And I can tell you, even today, I can tell you the names of companies that got all seven. They're, <laughs> they're on life support and don't know it. Now, Deming proposed a system which he called profound knowledge, the system of profound knowledge. Uh, his emphasis was one of the reasons I like Deming so much. People ask me, you say, you still teach Deming? You know, Deming's work was done in the 40s. I said, well, you know, Isaac Newton's work was done some time ago, and I think they still talk about him over in the physics department, you know? And I'm going to continue to talk about Deming as long as I can stand up here. And I think that's probably going to be for a while. He had an emphasis on product development, the relationship to suppliers, the need for research, the importance of it early, early work in quality, advanced design, and similar type issues. Uncontrolled variation <coughs> produces low quality. This is a key finding of Deming's work. Uncontrolled variation produces low quality. That is, the culprit, according to Deming, of low quality and low product, product, productivity, both low quality and low productivity, is failure to understand the impact of uncontrolled variation. 
High quality produces productivity. Revolutionary. The other thing Deming taught us in his writings on profound knowledge is that we need to learn to forecast. Shooting at a target that's moving, you don't shoot where the target has been. You shoot where the target's going. What did Wayne Gretzky say? What did Gretzky say? What, what, let me remember if I can. You don't take. You'll always miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Yeah, but that's not the quote. He has another quote, something about the line, uh, you, you shoot ahead. Where the other play, when you're passing, you shoot where the other player's going, not where they are. Okay. True values do not exist. Anybody understand what he means by that? There's variation in all... All of our measurements is what he means. People are the most important part of the system. Deming's key theme is the problem is the process, not the people. You can fire everybody, hire another crew. If the process is defective, you're still going to have the same problems. Okay, if you want to learn more, here are some suggestions, and I'm assigning you all to go to the W. Edwards Deming Institute. So just Google that and go to that web page. Okay.